So it's finally time to begin the bracing process for our soundboard. Now fortunately we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, we have been given a set of plans, a set of plans that come in the kit are using a traditional uh, X brace design and I'm going to make some changes to it. There's some things you need to know, uh, some general concepts you need to know about bracing. In general, narrow and tall braces are stiffer than wider and shorter braces. Now there's always variables in there about the stiffness of the brace wood and stuff you're using. But in general, uh, I'm talking very generic terms here, narrower and taller is stiffer, wider and shorter is looser. Now think about your top in terms of stiffness and looseness. And we've already talked about that a little bit when I was doing that flop test. We started thickness in it and we kept taking it off until it became loose enough to have that sheet metal sound. Uh, in other words, we were taking some of the stiffness out because we were reducing the height of that top and that was uh, allowing it to become more floppy or loose. When you, when you brace your top, when we voice the top, I want you to think in terms of looseness and stiffness, not uh, treble, bass, uh, certain pitches, anything like that. Think of looseness and stiffness as you do your bracing pattern. Now fortunately we have uh, a set of plans that will be given to us and I'm going to make some changes to that, uh, to those plans that I'll talk about right now. Alright, so here's the plans that come in your kit and it's a traditional X brace design. Now, these particular plans are a little different than the traditional Martin uh, type plans. For example, here uh, the width of the brace, the X brace, they're calling for 9.5 millimeters. That's about 0.38 of an inch by a half inch tall or 13 millimeters. The traditional Martin was a quarter inch wide, quite a bit narrower, but 5 eighths inch tall. Now, based on what I've just told you as far as looseness and stiffness, uh, that will give you some ideas about what's going on here. Also, uh, the tone bars here, the X brace, the finger, bar, uh, finger braces, uh, the upper transverse brace, everything is going through the kerfing. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stop. The only, the only thing I'm going to put through the kerfing is the X brace and the upper transverse brace. I'm not going to put the tone bars through the kerfing. I'm going to stop them short as well as the finger braces. Those will stop short of the kerfing. Uh, I'm also not, not going to notch them into the X brace. That's another change I make. The traditional Martin X brace was a little closer to your sound hole. Uh, usually about an inch and a half from the uh, center of the X brace to the sound hole. And this one's coming in at about two millimeters. Now, what is that going to do? I like to refer to this as your prime real estate. And Kent Everett taught me that term. Uh, this is where things are happening right here. Uh, if you encroach on that prime real estate with your bracing pattern, you could tighten this up a little bit. Now, there are probably situations where you would want to do that. Uh, the traditional Martin pulls that forward just a little bit. In other words, you have more resonating area back here and it could loosen it up. Now, all of this is very subjective, open to discussion and interpretation. But I'm speaking in very general terms here. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and start making a cut list of all of the braces that I need to cut. All of the braces must be quarter sawn. In other words, I want the grain standing straight up and down. If you're looking at the end of the brace, it's standing straight up and down. When we go to make our X joint, we want that tight. Anything above the X brace in the, uh, in the sound, around the sound hole area and up here, you can you have some, some good liberties if you want to take them. You don't necessarily have to follow the plans here, and I don't. I make some changes there. For example, the upper transverse brace on this plan calls for 13 millimeters wide by 13 millimeters tall. Um, I uh, think that that's a pretty important brace, and I also drill a hole in it to access my truss rod from the sound hole end. So I beef that up just a little bit. Uh, also the tongue depressor, as I like to call it, here on the plans they show it going way out wide. I bring it in and bump it right up against that upper transverse brace. So I'm going to go ahead and just start cutting braces here. I'll talk to it, talk to you about it as I do it, and uh, then when we actually go to glue them on, I'll give you a better description of what I'm doing.